Awesome. We're back. This is the last week of August, which is the last week if it feels like summer. And um, it doesn't actually quite feel like summer today. So I guess that's kind of fitting for our last book. This is Aisha, one half of this podcast. This is Lexi, the other half of this podcast. I think last time we did it backwards, I said, this is one half of this podcast, Aisha, instead of the other way around. (laughs) I just remember thinking, that didn't sound right. Um... So we'll say this now and I'll remind everyone again before the end of the episode, but we are taking a break the first week of September. So the first week of September, there will not be an episode. So the, the day after Labor Day, there will not be an episode. And then the rest, the last four, the four weeks of September, the rest of September, we'll have books and we are doing a back to school student teacher. That's what the theme is, right? Mm. Or teacher is the theme teachers teachers is the theme yeah um hopefully we have some hits because the last time we did the back to school and did that one teacher like book i literally didn't even finish i I dnf'd it i didn't even which one was that academically yours oh i dnf'd it i literally I couldn't even finish, finish that. i finished it anyway so just a heads up next week there's no episode but the week after that we're back um so for this week we did savor it by tara do it and i actually thought this is an arc but it's been out since may may yeah um so good i liked it it wasn't what i was expecting it to be i don't know i don't know what i was expecting but that wasn't it does that make sense yeah also, the guy in this cover is not what I pictured. He looks like a pirate. What are you talking about? She Fisher looks look more like. like not what I was expecting. I expected her to be quirkier than, like, I wish they put her in one of the robes. Yeah. But he looks like a pirate. He does kind of look like a pirate. And he has his little that. mullet and his earrings. The fact that when she did describe his hair, she didn't say mullet, but I was like, that sounds like a mullet. That sounds like a mullet. Um, she's okay. He's like, he's like a sexy pirate. Let's start from the beginning here. So, tropes. I actually have a decent amount. Um, fake dating. Yes. Small town. Yes. Forced proximity. Yes. Grumpy sunshine. Yes. And single parent. Yes. Do you have any more? Um, I don't think so. I guess like friends with benefits. Does that work? Were they friends with benefits, though? I don't know. I mean, they weren't not. They weren't not, but they also, like... I mean, time limit? Does that count? I don't know if that's a trope. Is that a trope? I thought that was a trope. Like, when people have, like, a time limit on their... Like, oh, we can only be together for the summer or, like, a month. Oh, what is this? What did you do? I don't know. Um, okay. I'm going to see if Goodreads has anything else. Because sometimes people tag stuff. Um, okay. Let's see what this says. Found family? I mean, nah, not, not really. really. Not really. Um, summer romance, which is, yeah, that's why we picked it. So summer romance. Opposites attract. Sure. Yeah, they put friends to lovers on this. Yeah. Okay. Um, trigger warning. Talk about some grief. Yeah, they talk about grief, like a death of a parent or like and a loved one. Sibling, yeah. The fucking brother gets burned. burned. <laughs> like a good portion of his body. So I feel like that should count. Um, otherwise this is a pretty fluffy book mm-hmm. and I mean a uh, burnout uh, like Fisher's burnout oh yeah I guess could be something mm-hmm. Aisha I think you're just coming up with tropes you're just I'm just making stuff up. You're just making it up. Um, okay, so this actually is a... I read this really fast. I don't know. It took me like a day. I did not read that in a day. 
I was also camping, so maybe that's why, because we had nothing else to do. Um, okay, so this had a 3.97 on Goodreads with 11,000 ratings. That's... Uh, that felt high. Well, I don't know. It's been making its rounds. Because this was an indie book, and then I got traditionally published recently. I've been seeing it places. Have you? Yeah. I. Yeah, I guess 3.7 is pretty accurate. Because, like, I gave this. I guess, yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Because you can't give half stars. No. I think if you could give half stars, this would be, like, a solid one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll read the back of the book. Let's read the actual book. Sage Bird has learned to love her small world in the coastal town of Spoons. Of Spoons? It's Spoons. That's why the sign says not to be confused with forks. <laughs> Did you not notice that? <laughs> I didn't. I, I, now that you said that, I remember reading that being like, what? Spoons, Oregon, with the misfit animals on her hobby farm, her friends and her students to make her smile. When her ex, town golden boy Ian, suddenly gets engaged, Sage wants a win. Beating him in the Festival of Spoons, the town's annual summer competition, would be the perfect way to show everyone she's doing fine. No pity necessary. She just needs a partner. Fisher Lang. Is that how you'd say it? It's like L. Lang. But there's an E at the end. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pronounce it that way. Lange? Is that what you want to say it? I don't know. Lange? (laughs) Fisher I'm, I'm gonna say Lang was a hot, hot shot, sh- hot shot chef in New York City until the loss of his sister left him grieving and responsible for his teenage niece. After Fisher loses his Michelin star along with his love of cooking, his boss sends him to Spoons for a last chance project to redeem himself. But as his grumpy nature causes clashes with the townspeople, and a kiss with his sunny new neighbor Sage leads to dating rumors, the pair strike a deal to turn things around. Soon, though, their alliance blooms into something unexpected, and while they try to savor every moment, summer is racing by all too quickly. That was accurate. Yeah, I guess. Sometimes I can't tell if these back of the books are actually long or if I just can't read. I I think it's a mix. (laughs) I just can't read out loud. Too much pressure. Um, Okay, That that was pretty accurate. So... Sage, what are your thoughts? Mm. Did you like her? I mean, yes and no. I couldn't tell if she was too quirky. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, very Manic Pixie Dream Girl-esque. But Coastal Grandma. Yes. Like, if I was a Manic Pixie Dream Girl, but instead of going to record, record shops and only listening to indie rock... Like, she owns a hobby farm and only wears quirky kimonos. Correct. Yeah, I I wasn't sure if it was too much or not. Where I was like, I get that she's really quirky and I also get that these people exist. But I wasn't sure if it was a little over the top. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Also because Fisher is the exact opposite of her. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't quite sure if I liked her. Um, the Ian thing is, like, such a small part in this book. Yeah. It's, like, not really a thing. I thought, like, honestly, the ending kind of, like, it kept building. Like, halfway through it, it was, like, building, building, building. And then you get to the end, and it kind of just, like, flatlined. Well, because you expect them to fucking compete. You expect them to compete. You, you expect- I. You expect them to have, like, the whole, like, I expected him to, like, come back and confess his love and be like. Which he, like, does, but then he can't leave. He he can't stay, which I also got because I was hoping that they do. Like, I wanted to actually see the cooking competition and the trivia and then the race. But 
because of the whole her brother almost dying it like never happens and I was like oh I was like kind of excited because their banter is pretty good and I was hoping for more of that in those kind of competition settings Mm -hmm. because I was like I could picture this happening where he's like what's that show that you chopped he's like full chopped mode and she's just like standing there like what can I do I want to help and he's like don't touch anything (laughs) like can you not picture that And I was like that's what I wanted but they never did it yeah I don't know and then also like they did it to kind of get back at her ex and then but then like not but then not also the reasoning was weird like it wasn't i don't know do you know what i mean yeah like i think they should have scrapped the x thing and instead just went on him needing to like have an image so that the town would let the restaurant be constructed yeah and i think they should have just forgot the ian thing and just gone straight on or mm-hmm. had it be like a a confrontation moment not well, like yeah a and plot then like point. Ian, who, when they described him, I was like, I know exactly what this dude looks like. <laughs> uh, when they made fun of him, like, being a, a Ken doll, I was like, that's... Ken doll who's, like, balding? Yes. Uh, but, I don't know, I just expected more out of the ex. Like, I expected, like, them to pop up more, or, like, him to, like, try to talk to Sage... Like, for there to be actual confrontation, but the girl seemed really nice, like, and they genuinely didn't seem to clue in that maybe it was weird. Yeah. So, I just kind of, yeah, I don't know. I wasn't sure how I felt about that plot point. I just felt like it kind of went nowhere, and I feel like they should have stuck with the, he needs an image boost so that the town lets them continue construction on the restaurant, and him Mm -hmm. dating her as, like, one of the townies would help i think they should have stuck with that personally oh i don't know i felt the ending just kind of flatlined well because the brother ended up getting the burns and they just end up at the hospital and then yeah and it's like the thing is it's like when that happened and then um the whole like other brother and there's like another brother oh my god i will Three say of them two there's... firefighters and a cop no Three fire oh no two firefighters and then one's like out of town. Oh, one's a baseball player. Yeah. I wonder if he gets a book. I'm most I'm just like this is they're setting it up for the brothers to get books. Like, I don't think they do. I'll have to look at her other catalog, but I don't well, think they get books. I thought this was her like debut, was this not? No, she's got a, quite a few. Oh. This is her the first pub- published book. Cause like I like the entire time. Every time I talked about the brothers, I was like, "Oh, they're setting it up so they get their own books." Well, the the best friend and the brother get a second chance romance. Yeah, and then the other brother, the one that gets burned, gets a romance, and then the baseball player will Probably come back to a small back. town, get yeah. a romance. Wow, it's so much like I I know I hate comparing series, but. It's kind of like the um, Elsie Sadler chestnuts. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> because, like, Hopeless is Jasper's a professional. Yes. Hockey player. And then, uh, what's, is it Hope? No. Yeah. Ho- no, Hopeless is, um, ba- I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Bo. Bo. Yes. And powerless is oh yeah powerless is okay and jasper then, but like also hopeless uh Bo has like the burns on his feet and like because he was in the army right and then he can't like he got discharged from like honorably discharged from the army because of his his injuries it is actually kind of yeah now that you're saying that it is pretty similar yeah, because the brother, the brother who the second chance brother, would basically be heartless, mm-hmm. grumpy sunshine, like single dad, older yeah, mm-hmm. older brother. That's true. Yeah, I see mm-hmm. that. This is that is a it's a little it is pretty similar in like different ways, but yeah, okay, because okay, I feel like we should circle back to the beginning. So basically. 
Fisher ends up in this small town because he throws a pie, a cake, like some sort of dessert into the face of a food critic. A food critic who was trying to harass him while he was eating his dinner. Yeah, I thought that was actually kind of, I mean, it's one of those things where justified, but also, bro, the internet. <laughs> like, But also, it's just like, let him eat his fucking dessert. Like, I know. I did. I was like, honestly, same. Like, I don't at all fault you for that. But like, also, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. So I totally get it. He also was already spiraling because his sister just died and he was like already like not enjoying cooking anymore. I wish that they talked more about why he didn't take the niece originally. Because I don't think they ever really addressed Yo, that. No, because it was like, yeah, they did. It was like, um, he was like, one, he was spiraling. So he was like, I don't even know how to deal with my own grief. You think I'm going to be able to deal with the grief of a 12-year-old? Yeah. Yeah, she and was then 13. And- also, sh- he was like... um his hours were inconsistent because he's a chef. So yeah, he works, I mean they're nights too. He he'll work like what two to to like midnight past midnight one a.m. Yeah, like you're there for the the rush. You're there for the 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 dinner portion. Most yeah. Of the time. So like, if you can't leave a thirteen year old really at home. That's like yeah. a borderline. Like maybe, but it would depend. Yeah. Because, like, basically his sister dies in a drunk driver accident or just... No, I think she just, like, she, like, hit a rail and then, like, she just went over the edge of a, like, a... I thought it was a drunk driver incident. I don't remember. It was a car accident. It was a car accident. And then his sister dies three years ago. He's the godparent of the niece... And so he, te- like, sh- it technically sh- takes her, yeah. but he didn't want to take the niece. So then his parents, her grandparents, take on the, the niece. And she is, like, goes through a phase where she, like, runs away multiple times. And basically he's like, fuck it. Like, I'll take her. We She can't keep running away. Like, obviously she's unhappy with the grandparents. So she... Mm-hmm goes to live with him in in new york city but like he basically picks her up and goes right to the small town yeah i liked her i thought that she was pretty accurately like i feel like kids in romance can sometimes be weird yeah but she was very like well she's like a 15 year old like 15 year olds are just i think teenagers are easier i liked how when they first showed up and the town was like there's a hot new single guy in that house. All of the single women drop by with cookies, casseroles, just to say hey and be mm-hmm. like, friendly neighbor, do you need anything? And he's like confused. He's like, why are all these people coming to my door? Stop. Yeah. And then Sage is just like, I know exactly what's going on here. Yeah, they're all basically presenting themselves to be like, I am also single. Um, I thought that was really funny. And then the niece is like, fuck these people. <laughs> like, yeah. there's another woman at the door for you. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. I I like the animals. I like the cat, Legolas. Well, and then the cat, like, there's the moment where he's laying in the grass and the cat lays on him and he's like, oh, no. Oh, it's happening. And he just lays there yeah. and just lets it happen. And the cat's just, like, laying on his chest. And then the goose... I actually thought that was so cute that the goose like basically imprinted on her, on the niece, and then followed the niece around everywhere. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cute. I like I thought it was it was a little weird, but also I was like, okay, sure, it's quirky and like kind of cute. And then she gets sad at the end because when after they move, he she's just like, did you know geese mate for a life? Yeah, and I abandoned him. Yeah, I that's. Like, not to spoil, but that's my favorite part, is her, like, and he's, like, are we good? Are you okay? Do I? I don't, I don't know what to do. Are you, are you in your period? Like, I, I don't know. Okay? 
And she's like, we have to go back. And he's like, you want to go back. I came here because you wanted to come here. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about... Let's talk about the fake dating thing for a second. Mm-hmm. So... Is it fake dating? I can't even remember. Because they get... They kissed the library. Okay, yeah, why was that? Because the the ex was there. Oh yeah, that's right. And then they were look like he they were like watching them. So then he was like, "We'll make him jealous, or we'll make them uncomfortable, and we'll make out." But they were like, it was very like the logic of like A to B. Like he's watching us. We should make out. Just like I don't think it quite connected. <laughs> well, the thing is, is they've been kind of like dancing around each other at that point anyway. Yeah, I guess it was kind of it was more of an excuse to make out rather than like mm-hmm. there was an actual reason to make out. Because, yeah, I also her being so serious about the boating thing and like them training. Yeah. If that was me, I'd be like, no. No. She needs to win it. She wants to win it. I don't know. Yeah, I would have been like, no, I can't. I this is too much. But then the town wouldn't accept you and then That's true. And I then did your your restaurant your friend's restaurant would be kicked out of town. I was trying to picture what this restaurant looked like with the observatory. A giant penis. I mean, yes, but also like the top is glass right i pictured it okay the reason so i pictured it like a silo but instead of but it, instead of having it be like straight all the way up that there was like a lip with like a like a, a deck and then a glass which is why it looked like a penis <laughs> that's what i pictured in my head is that okay. it was like the top was more a dome so it like came out and then went o- up and over i did not picture it that way that was the way they kind of described it. in my head that's what it, it came together as i did not picture it that way um i yeah i didn't like the i also thought the sand castle or sand maze thing was random yeah i wasn't quite sure how i felt about that i was like this a lot of things going on in this book well so like they basically the, the the whole book is them training for this competition this like race and you can enter like early what are the what do they call so them? it's like the bonus the bonus thing so it's like basically you get you you get time reducted off your race time if you win oh another competition if you win these like bonus competitions oh one of them was a cooking competition and one of them was a trivia yeah a town trivia i see okay because i was like i don't but like you don't need to enter you could still technically win the race and if, not do the competitions yeah. cuz i feel like the whole summer the book t- takes place literally the entire summer like mm-hmm. almost but june when school finishes basically so like june straight through to like labor day yeah and then the whole summer went really slow and then all of a sudden the competition was happening and it was like they're at the hospital for like a week and a half and i was like where did all the time go? Like we, we were seeing them like every day and then all of a sudden no, two weeks have gone and by. And also when they start sleeping together, it's just kind of like two weeks go by. Yeah. I liked the, um, I liked the first time they had sex scene when they like cook mm-hmm. and then they go and back she, to, yeah. And she's like, I, I'm not going to have sex in this house. Uh, we have to go back to my place. Yeah. But then it's like raining. So then they like run back in the rain. I liked that. I also liked when she gets the call about the abandoned farm and she's like, okay, do not let me get any more animals. Say it to me. You're not going to let me get any more animals. He's like, okay, we're not getting any more animals. No more animals. Driving back, two baby goats. What else? A pig and something else? Yeah, and I think it was like another bird or something. It was like something. Oh, ducks, wasn't it? Wasn't it like ducks? I'm not sure. I know it was like they he wouldn't let her take the emus. Yeah. <laughs> but they had like the the baby goats or the mini mini goats or something. Oh the the donkeys. They're donkeys. Oh they're donkeys. The mini don- no, he had goats and then they it, also got donkeys. They got the mini donkeys, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cuz the goat those baby the, goats. The baby goats and then the mi- then they got mini donkeys. 
Because and then niece was really excited about the mini donkeys. Right. Okay. Because then she's like, "Don't make any more animals." And then they're driving back in her truck, being like, "Okay, well, we only got half of them, so that counts." But then he is like obsessed with the little baby goats, and I was like, "That's kind of cute." Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know this book. I feel like a lot happens in this book. A lot happens, and they kind of it kind of just doesn't go anywhere with the the things that happen. I mean, I feel like it's a small town romance thing. Like though. I think like the stakes are not high. The, but the thing is, is, this was there to set up the next books. I think it's like there to establish this town. It's there to establish this like, like what the family's like and like who the people in the family are. And the best way to do that yeah. is you're bringing an outsider and you're like, okay, oh, learn yeah. about this town. That's true because then you have to explain everything because the outsider doesn't get it. Yeah. See, I don't think any of her other books are connected. I I think this is going to be a series. I don't think she would have written those brothers the way they did if she wasn't expecting to. Oh, okay. So this book is anticipated release May 2025. It's called Left of Forever. And it's uh, it's the second chance. Ren, Ren, Ren and, and I was trying to figure out Ellis. ages because so he's he's like thirty six. Yeah, I pictured her in her like late twenties, like twenty seven or twenty. Yeah, because then Ren was talking about how she's like early thirties, and she's like four or five years older. Yeah. Because she was like 13 when they had the kid. Yeah. Which they had at 18 or something like that. Like right out Pretty of high young, school. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it looks it looks like you're right. This was a setup. I'm just too smart. I mean, the thing is, though, is that it did feel like a setup. Like it felt, it felt like, like she like was setup, setting up. The problem is like you needed to. They couldn't have waited for. Micah, who's the one of the middle kids, the foot, the the player, the p- no. baseball. No, that's not Micah. Yeah, or Silas. No, Silas Sil- is the one that was burned. Well, they couldn't have waited for the next book to burn him. They had to do it in this book. Didn't well, because you know that's going to be part of his ster- his character arc of like. But it's just like he's half burned. It didn't and he's a tortured hero. To, it didn't all need to happen in this book. Uh, you're you're right. I do feel like she maybe set up this book in order to continue a series, and then it took away a little bit from the actual story of the yeah. two of them. Okay, so what was your what was your least favorite part? I think just the ending, because they didn't win the canoe. They, I mean, they won the canoe race, but they didn't win the canoe race because yeah, because the town the the only the the townies waited you know to start the canoe race for them also they were four hours late yeah <laughs> and they weren't in any wetsuits they were in jeans because jeans i was t-shirt. expecting when they were like okay maybe we'll make it back for the start of the race i was like okay i can picture this like they roll up they run out of the car they get in their canoe and then they still win but no like they show like they they did not make it like anywhere close to the start time, like the race was over. <laughs> yeah. Also, when they when they did the fake race, like they're like, oh, let's like race for funsies. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, our time was like just under two hours, and I was like, how long is this? That race? is a long ass canoe. I was in my head when they when they I thought it was like a race. dragon boat race. Yes, where it's like a, we're going across the water and and back maybe. No, it was like legit, like a legit canoe race. Yeah. Um yeah, I was like, "Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a that's a long race." Um okay. Yeah, that's fair. I also I did like the whole the reason they had to separate though because basically what happens is the niece gets the uh, niece says like I'm not living in another shitty small town. Like I well, did that. Well, the niece basically like panics yeah because she's gonna be stuck in a small town even though she has feelings for sam who is uh sage's nephew yeah 
Um, but she grew up in a small town, and there was like a there was like a whole backstory to that, which I thought was interesting. And then basically, she was like, uh, "I'm not being stuck here, and you have to like, you have to like take me back to New York." And to be fair, like I I got his point of view. Like he's never had a kid. He now has a teenager and like a full blown. I don't give a fuck teenager, not like young adult. Like at 13, they're like a lot more agreeable at 16. They're like, fuck you. I'm not doing that. Yeah. So I mean, like they fair. literally had to take down the, the lattice, the lattice outside the so window. She'd stop trying to sneak out the window. Yeah. I loved when she was making out with Sam in the car and he was like, yeah, no. And goes out there and just, like, does he, like, lay on the horn? Yeah, because they, uh, he, like, just gets out of his truck or something. And he spots them in Sam's truck. Yeah. So then he's just like, uh, that's not happening. Not today. <laughs> and just lays on the horn and is like, so when you're done sucking my niece's face, you can go. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. I, my least favorite part I think it was like the because similarly like the brother Bur- like I just feel like that didn't need to ha- I it was such a random side plot. Mm-hmm. Also, she did foreshadow it where she, where Sage was like, I just have a bad feeling about them going to fight forest fires, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, oh god. And then also because he ends up fine. Obviously, he's not fine because he's burned half his body. Not half. I think it's like... It, it was like both... It's like... Thir- I think he said it was like 30%. It was like both his legs or something. Because I think a tree fell on him. No. Oh, well, I thought that's what he it like, was. He got separated from his group and I think he like rolled down an embankment. Because I know it wasn't his face. It was like... No, it was his lower half of his body. Okay. I think it was like it, one leg and then it was like torso. up his torso. Because... I just felt like that was so it actually it it sounds a lot more dramatic than it actually was in the book. Yeah. And I think that's what I feel like it either should have been more dramatic. Well, that's what I was saying. Is or like the they should have cut of it. Like, like every plot point they were building up. And I'm not saying this book is bad. It's just kind of like because they also at the end of the book uh, note that Misha <laughs> that or micah the brother is yeah. coming back because he got dropped from his contract and i was like yeah. well they're obviously setting that up for something yeah and then they're also setting up i really wish um because like there's another diner in town yes and it's set up that like fisher's waiting for the owner to retire to retire and so he can try to buy this diner off of him yeah but i really wish that was like establish more that like i understand that he like got to know the owner but it was kind of like one-off little lines of like it wasn't shown in the book yeah it was like oh he's keeping me in touch or like oh he's like and this was like the guy who o- brings a chinchilla everywhere so <laughs> I'm, he was like that doesn't go <laughs> in the kitchen right she's like oh not with the food and he's like but but inside the restaurant no he was like He's like, that's a rat. And then he, she's like, no, it's a chinchilla. And she's, she's like, don't like, let him hear you say that. Does he's really he sensitive. touch, hold the chinchilla when he's making food? And she's like, no, not when he's making food. And, and then he's, he's like, like, but, but, but in the restaurant, <laughs> there's a chinchilla in the restaurant. And she's like, yeah, but I think chinchillas are quite clean though. Are they not? Okay. So I actually know the answer to this question because our friend dated a girl who had a chinchilla red flag, but so they actually have, first of all, they need a lot of space. Their cages have to be huge. And you actually get this dust. It's like it's like a, a pot of dust. And you are supposed to, like, put it in a bowl. And the chinchilla rolls in it. And that's how they get clean. It's so weird. He explained this to me. He sent me, I saw a video of it. And the chinchilla looks literally just a bowl of gray dust. And it's specifically, like, meant for chinchillas. And they roll in it. And then they, like, shake it off and that's it and it like cleans them so like i'm sure that they're kind of clean but it's yeah they they're dusty it's not like at least it's not a rat no that's true it's not a rat although i don't know if chinchilla is really that much better 
I don't know. Are chinchillas wild animals that we domesticated, or they've always just been pets? They're wild animals that we've domesticated. Where are they native to, then? I think somewhere in South America. Oh. Random. You can Google it. Hey, Google, where do chinchillas originate from? South America. Oh. <laughs> there you go. South America. Anyway, side note on chinchillas. Um... Okay. Yeah, I I it all was like off page. Oh, we're friends now. Yeah. My okay, what was your favorite part then? I really like the sign when they're the, when they're driving in. <laughs> the one we talked about? Okay, I was really confused by like how they set up the car because it said Indy was in the back seat, but did yeah. they bring someone with them? There was so many people introduced in this book and most of the time, I was, like, really fucking confused on who most of them were. Yeah. But, like, I don't understand why she was in the backseat. Because, like, I think she was just being can sit in the front. A shitty teenager. And then it was, like, oh, like, is he bringing someone else in? No, I think she just was, like, I don't want to fucking talk um, to you. But anyway, when they were, like, driving into town and they're, like, looking at the town and they were, like, oh, this is, this is it. <laughs> And then the va- the the vacuum. That's honestly, I do think that was really funny because he's just like he's freaking so out. embarrassed, and he's like, "I just need someone to end like you. These people just need to leave so I can die of embarrassment in peace." And it's it actually is really funny how they basically how they meet like how Sage meets Fisher and then like her brothers are there because they're the the firefighters. And um, he basically thinks there's a break in and it's really just like a Roomba that's been set to 4 a.m. And they don't realize it. So they leave their shit everywhere and it like sucks up like a bag or something. And it sounds like someone's rustling around and running into stuff. Mm-hmm. I did think that was really funny. That That is a good scene. And then the brothers like wouldn't leave. They Cause they're just, just like, nosy. they're like, well, how do you know that there's no one in the house? And they're, he's just like... They were just being assholes. Can you just, like, can you just leave? And then Say shows up, and then the brothers are like, wait, you don't know who's in that house? And she's like, well, did you check the house? Yes. So there's no one in the house. He's like, yeah, but also he's not safe. And they're like... She's like, you can go now. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. My, I think my favorite part is the the goose thing like the goose imprinting on the niece and then like following her around because he thinks it's uh she's his mate and then her having that meltdown being like geese mate for life like i left him we have to go back um because then when they drive back up sage is like sitting in the field with the goose like feeding him treats because she's worried he's depressed which she probably was and then the goose freaks out and, like, runs into the niece's arms. Like, literally just, like, jumps up into her arms. I thought that was really well, cute. Well, also, like, because uh, after the vacuum scene, Sage comes over and, like, Indy was trying to leave. Leave. Sneak she was trying out. to sneak out of the window. And he was, she was, like, when Fisher was, like, uh, she was talking to Fisher about it. She's, like, yeah, your your daughter was trying to sneak out the window. And he's, like, What? And she's like, oh, she's on the porch now. And she's like, how did you do that? And she's like, oh, I just gave her a goose. I just told her to hold my goose. Why she had the goose to begin (laughs) with, I don't know. I don't remember. But she, like, literally carried the goose over to get the cat. Yeah, because the cat snuck into the Anderson's house. Yeah. The animals in this book were really quirky and actually, like, all had, like, distinct personalities and were really funny. I liked that part, actually. Um, Okay. So, what was your rating on this book? I gave it a four on Goodreads, but I'd say like a 3.5. Yeah, same. I gave this a four on Goodreads, but I also would say a 3.5. Like a solid 3.5, but... Which is why the 3 point whatever, 3.97 makes sense. Because I rounded up being like, yeah, this was good. But if I could give a half star, I would give a half star. Yeah. Um, Steam? Like a... Like a 1.5? Yeah. They... Yeah, I would say 1.5. Oh, well, there's a couple sex scenes in it. But they're like... 
I don't know. You, I feel like you end up glossing over them because there's so many other things happening. Well, there's the blowy in the library. That was good. And, and then, then the sex scene that they have with the rain. Yes. And then, and then doesn't he eat her out before that? Like yeah. before the first time? So maybe there is more. So two? Yeah, maybe it is a two. Um, okay, would you reread this? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think I would either. Would you recommend this? Maybe. I don't know. There might be m- more small town, ta- like different small towns that books that I would uh, recommend before this one. But if you're just like, oh, I've read like all these other small towns and I need a new one, then I'd be like, sure, this one. I think if someone asked me and said, hey, did you like this book? I would say, yes, you should read it. But I can't see myself going out of my way to recommend it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's just, I don't know. Not my, it wasn't my favorite small town. Um, okay. Do you have anything else you want to add about this book? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think we covered everything. Um, what are you reading right now? I'm reading Play Along by Liz Tom Ford. Oh, the newest one. Yeah. Is it good? I think it's pretty good. How far are you? I'm like 30% in. Oh, okay. Okay. But it's like another, the thing is, it's like another fake dating, quote unquote fake dating for What's the series. What's the sport? It's baseball. Okay, so it's. Because it's Kai's, who's in, caught oh. up. His brother, who plays on the team with him. So, book one and two. I actually haven't read these. I feel like I should. You should. So, book one and two are hockey? No, no, no. Book one is hockey. Book two is basketball. Book three and four are baseball. Okay. And then I think the last book is going to be hockey as well. How are they all connected? Yeah. So, the first book... um, The first book is like the 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 heroine yeah her brother and co-worker slash best friend because she's a flight attendant for the the hockey hockey team team, uh is the second book oh and then he's the basketball player oh and then the third book was the basketball player's neighbor and then he mentions, because, like, it's, like, a single dad, and he mentions that the baby was, like, dropped off at his apartment, because he used to live in the same apartment building. Oh, and he's like, bro, there's a... Bro, we just had a baby dropped off. Yeah. I see. And then Isaiah is obviously Kai's brother. And then the last one is Rio, who was a teammate of the first book, and is, like, friends with most of the women. And he just, like, shows up to their like friend get togethers like he's like that's random alone. <laughs> but okay okay random but okay and i'm sure there'll be more i i mean they're introducing um the main like the heroine's stepbrother who's in atlanta right now so i'm assuming they're gonna like branch off and it's now gonna be it's gonna a be a different a city. different city it would make sense unless they do the other two friends in this book which I, I don't know how much longer she wants to stay in in the Windy Chicago. City. Yeah. See, I think the perfect amount of books in a series is five. I think anything more than five is too many. Because mm. after five, I I just I need a break. Five, I can binge, and then I would need a break, and then sometimes I never go back. Five is the perfect amount, I in guess. my opinion. Maybe if you like, um, if you like the windy city series i've heard that the laura pavlov series i think what it's called i don't know what that's called um you might like anyway uh what am i reading i just started reading something last night but i don't remember what it's called it's a alien oh it's like my husband oh my god okay wait yeah i also am reading that but i stopped because it was not great okay and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to DNF it. It's like my my husband, like, or my 
mate the alien or something. He's like a wolf alien. I don't know. It was weird. I was like, I don't know. This isn't very good. Uh, oh, wait. Now I'm reading the Las Vegas Lavender Moon. That's what it was. Because I, I was lost. La- Lavender Moon, Las Vegas, like the point oh, five. Oh, okay. That's what I was reading next. Because I took a break to read this alien one. And then I was like, nah, this is not it. Okay. Um, I heard a lot of random stuff. So, yeah, there's that. Okay. So... As a reminder, next week, there is no episode, but there will be the week after. We are doing teachers as Mm -hmm. the theme for September. I think October will be, like, spooky. And then I think November we should do uh, audience recommendations. Like, we should put a call out for recommendations and read stuff. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Um... Okay, I don't have anything else to add. So on that note, rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast. It's really helpful when you do. I feel like such a broken record saying that, but it really is helpful for people to find us on um, like Spotify and Apple Podcasts because they'll recommend it to other people if you rate and review. The... At this point, you'll be days away from the end of the fall box pre-orders. So if you had your eye on one, I would pre-order because the prices will go up in September. And then once they're sold out, they're sold out. We've only got, I think we're 70% sold out already. So there actually isn't that many book boxes left. So if you want to act on one, I would do so now. If you use our code, Sisters Reading Romance, all caps, you get 15% off and that is included on the boxes. Um, otherwise, I don't have anything else to add. So we'll see you or we'll be back in your ears next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.